In this section of lecture on interpolation, we will look at some interpolation methods. Let's start with the general equation that says the interpolation function is a sum of trend and the fun weighted function of distance between unsampled and measured points. And based on the form of this function and the weights, we will get different interpolation methods. So let's start with the simplest methods, and that's the Voronoi polygons, linear interpolation on TIN, and inverse distance weighted method. So what are Voronoi polygons? Voronoi polygons create a unique nearest neighborhood around each point, and the edges of this neighborhood are defined as equidistant to two given points. So how do we create them? So for example, here we start with these two points. When we connect them, the point that is in the middle of this connection will be equidistant to, equidistant to both of these points. So we can create an edge. Then we take another point and we create an edge that passes through the middle of this, um, of this connection between two given points. And then we repeat it for the rest of the points. And by connecting these edges, we create the polygon that creates this unique nearest neighborhood around each point. And then how can we use this for gridding? Uh, we can then assign every grid point within the, within the neighborhood of each point the same measured value. So it is important to realize that the value at an unsampled point R will be the same as the measured value at the center of the Voronoi polygon within which the unsampled point is located. That means if we go back, if we have a point here, for example, this would be a grid point, then the value of this grid point will be the same as the value of the point at the center of this polygon. We can express this mathematically uh, as a simplification of our general equation. So trend will be zero, there is no trend, and the value at any grid point will be weighted measured value, where the weight will be one. If the point is located within the polygon, and it will be zero, if the point is not within the polygon. And this essentially says that the points that are within polygon will be assigned the same value as the center of the Voronoi polygon. So this is how the uh, result will look like. The, the blue points are the measured points and you can see there is a neighborhood, unique nearest neighborhood around each point and that within that neighborhood or grid cells have the same value as the given point. So for example, this is the given point and all points that are within its nearest neighborhood will are assigned the same value. Here is another example that you will be doing for your assignment with a den uh, from a denser set of points. So it looks a little bit better, a little bit more continuous, but you can see that there are still jumps, discontinuities based on the values in these measured points. Now, TIN-based TIN linear interpolation. This is a little bit more complex, where the value at a given point is a linear combination of values at three nearby points that form vertices of a triangle. Again, we can express it 
is a simplification or, or a special case of our general equation. Trend will be zero and the z value will be a weighted average of the values in the uh, triangle vertices and the weight will be proportional to the area of triangle defined by the unsampled point and two given points. And you can also interpret it as finding a point that is within the plane defined by these triangles. Now, important part of uh, linear interpolation on TIN is the actual triangulation, because there, is, there are many ways how the triangles can be created from uh, scattered points. Most of the implementations use so-called Delaunay triangulation. It tries to maximize the smallest angle in the triangle. So, for example, here we have a triangle, one of the possible triangles that you can make out of, uh, create out of these four points. And you can see this is our smallest uh, angle in this triangle. And we are trying to find such a triangle where this, is be, this will be largest possible. So if we flip this edge to this position, you can see that then the smallest angle will be here and this angle is larger than this. So this will be Delaunay triangulation of these four points rather than this. And this condition can be also defined using the circles. So the definition then will read that no point in a set of points P that we are trying to triangulate is inside the circumcircle of any triangle in Delaunay triangulation. So what does that mean? Let's look at it. If we draw a, tra draw a circumcircle of this triangle, then you can see that there will be a point within that circle. So this is not a Delaunay triangulation. But if we flip the edge and we draw this circle, this point is actually outside that circle. And that will hold also for this one. So if you draw this circle, this point will be outside. And there are several efficient algorithms how to find this, uh, how to find this triangulation. And a lot of them use, uh, use edge flipping. So you are just crawling through the, uh, through the set of points, creating triangles, testing them whether they are whether they have these points inside or outside. If they have inside, you flip the flip the edge to find the correct triangle. And an, there is an interesting relation between Voronoi polygons and Delaunay triangulation that they are dual graphs. So the vertices of the uh, vertices of Delaunay triangulation will be also the centers of Voronoi polygons. And here is the comparison of uh, uh, the, rela the gridded surfaces. So this is surface gridded using Voronoi polygons and we have looked at that already. And this is using the same set of input points but the surface is computed as linear interpolation on TIN. So you can, see, you can see the triangles here. And what you can see here, we already said that function is not continuous, that we have jumps in the function. Here the function is continuous, the derivatives are not continuous, then that means that we have sharp edges between these triangles. And that's why they show up on shaded, uh, shaded topography. And this is just an example of a uh, relatively rarely used interpolation, and that's linear interpolation between contours. And it is essentially a computer implementation of manual method that was used to estimate elevation at any given point when you have a 
uh, contour map. So it finds the shortest distance from one contour to another contour and then computes the values using linear interpolation along this line. The most common interpolation method implemented in all GIS uh, and surface modeling systems is uh, inverse distance weighted interpolation. One reason why it is implemented everywhere that it is the simplest method. It's very simple to implement. And the value at an unsampled point is a weighted average of values at nearby measured points. So all that you need to do is to find the nearby points and then compute a weighted average. And the weights are usually inverse distance squared. And then we also need to define nearby measured points. And they, they can be defined in different ways. Uh, for example, as located within a given distance, so, or you can find the closest n points, for example, closest 12 points or closest 24 points, and you compute your uh, grid value as weighted average of these points. And there are many modifications and improvements to this method. So this is how it, uh, this is how it looks like. Here we have a grid point <clears throat> where we want to compute the, the new z value. So we find the closest endpoints, and they are here. And then we compute the weighted average, and the weights are dependent on distance. So again, when we look at the uh, general equation, it will be a special case of this general equation with zero trend and with the z-value computed as weighted average from the n nearby points. And uh, the weight inversely proportional to the distance and the, it's usually a power of distance and that power is usually set to 2. But you can tune the properties of the resulting surface a little bit by experimenting with this p-value. It is important to remember that this is an interpolation function. That means that the function passes through the data points. And if you need smoothing, then the weight can be modified by adding a smoothing parameter. So the surface can look like this, which of course doesn't look very good. And this is a rather extreme case, a uh, case of so-called bull's eye effect. That is an artifact of this method. And uh, this um, occurs when the distance between the measured points is larger than the dist distance between the grid points. That means, for example, here, uh, the values were, were measured at about each 50 meter distance, but we were interpolating to 2 meter resolution. So you need to be aware that when computing, uh, when using inverse distance, you try to interpolate to resolution that is close to the distances between the given points to avoid this bumpy surface or bull's eye effect in contours. And you can see that the bumps don't need to be as large and they essentially disappear when the resolution gets uh, close to the distance between the points. And this is inverse distance applied to our data set that you will be doing uh, for your assignments. Now, a very sophisticated and complex approach to interpolation is based on geostatistics. The, the, theory, the theory is based on the interpretation of surface as one realization of a random function that has spatial covariance. And this function is given by model variogram. This model variogram is found by fitting it to empirical variogram, which is computed from the data. 
And this is the first function that we will mention that includes also the trend term. And that would be the universal rigging. And the method can be implemented as global function. That means that you use all the points for computation of this function or very often to avoid large systems of linear equations. It is implemented as local function in a similar way as we have seen for the inverse distance weighted so that you apply the function only to closest endpoints. So the general equation is essentially the same as the general equation that we have uh, that we have already mentioned and R in this case will be a model variogram. So model variogram is a function that we will fit to empirical variogram and how do we compute empirical variogram? It is derived from data and it is computed as a mean difference in measured values for points that are separated by distance h. What does that mean? That means that we will select all the points that are separated by certain distance h and we will compute the mean difference for these, uh, for these uh, points. And when all these mean differences are plotted against these distances h, we will get an empirical variogram. And the model variogram assumes that the points that are close to each other, that means that they, are, they have small h, have smaller difference in measured values than the points that are farther apart. Or in other words, the farther the points are from each other, the greater the difference in the measured values can be. And uh, there are several terms introduced to characterize this uh, uh, variogram. So this will be our model variogram, and this is spherical. And, uh, and for points that are very, very close to each other, that they are practically identical, their mean difference in measured values can be around 0.2 in this case, and this is the nugget value. Then the maximum value at which this variogram levels off is called SIL. And uh, that means that after we reach the distance H over 20, the maximum differences don't change anymore and they will be around 1.2. And then we also define range and that's the distance to the seal. So that means that what is the distance after which the mean difference between the measured value doesn't change anymore. So here you have many examples of different model variograms that you can fit. And this selection of these variograms will also define how your resulting surface will look like. And here you have different, uh, different model variograms fit to certain given data. And you can see that it can be a pretty challenging task and that you can fit different model variograms to the same data. We will not talk uh, more about geostatistics because there is a 700 level course that uh, devotes full semester to geo uh, geostatistics, krigging, universal krigging, and how to perform interpolation using this approach. So here is an example result because we have so many of these model variograms. This is just one of many possible results using uh, geostatistics. And finally, there are radial basis functions, which are based on variational, on variational approach. And we will talk about radial basis functions in the next section.